hi everyone welcome to our channel so this video is on nt framework core 7 for interacting with the json data inside of our sql database so to this json data we can now map the columns query it and update it okay using our nt framework core 7 so here you can see a sample data that is employee data and if you observe this column details which is in json data okay let me copy one of the data and here you can see my json data nicely formatted right so here i am storing contacts like phone number and email and address user addresses okay so in general what we can do this data we have to retrieve like a string in our any dotnet application and then we have to typecast it either using the newton's of json we have to typecast it and we cannot query it or we cannot update it not so easily right so but using nt framework core 7 we can query it and we can directly access them like each into this entire json as a each individual column like its table set and also we can update it partially or completely okay so first i have created a sample web api application for retrieving that data okay which is a very simple example here you can see i am reading the contact details as a string okay and here is my db context and I, I am simply reading it i have one endpoint for to read it okay so first let's test the output of this endpoint so here is my swagger and if i check the endpoint here you can observe i am just reading them like a string okay if you want you can typecast it manually in the code before sending here here i am retrieving the data right here using uh, Newton's of JSON, you can typecast it manually, right? But now I will show how we can do the column mapping for those JSON documents using our EF code. Okay, so go to our table class employee. Okay, here what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a, a class like contacts. Okay, here you can observe the uh, json right so i'm going to first i'm going to create a class for this object the class name is contacts okay so i have already a code snippet let me copy paste it so here you can see i have added the class like contacts and it contains properties phone number and email which are equivalent to my json data okay now let me create a class like addresses okay. let me copy my code snippet okay this is my address class and all the properties inside of the json i have created like a normal c sharp properties now to hold these two classes we have to create one more parent class like contact details okay so let me create a parent class so this is my parent class that is contact details okay so it contains single object of contacts and collection of objects of addresses and these property names must our json property names here contacts and addresses are there right in the parent class those properties must be match okay so what we have did here we have created classes for our json data now what i can do instead of this string copy it and comment it instead of string let me give contact details okay so i am expecting now like a, some table data with parsed data directly from the sql server now in the context db we have to map explicitly on model binding method okay so in the my old db context we can write a protected for right okay on model creating okay this is a overloaded method of my db context so while model creating 
uh, we have to specify some rules for our JSON data to get parsed. Okay, here it will contain input parameter like model builder. Okay. Now here what I can do. Here uh, actually JSON data exists with my employee table, right? So model builder dot entity dot okay employee type class type okay and to map okay these kind of aggregated types we have to use either owns one or owns many okay if they are collection we have to use owns many if they are single we have to use owns one okay so here content details is single so i am going to use owns one and this to map for the which property so this should be maps for the employee contact details okay and here further for employee contact details we have to map further uh, mapping for that we have to use second parameter like any name you can give i will name it like owned navigation builder okay and here we have to specify some rules first thing we have to uh, inform our ab contest this column the contact detail column is a json column okay so here i can specify like old navigator build dot to json okay next instead of that json what are the objects we want to map for that own navigation builder dot uh, if you go to our contact details type it contains single object of contacts right so i can write like own one okay and here i can specify the property name contacts and here if you observe addresses are collection right so for that i can register like owns many okay and it should be addresses so what we are doing here we are specifying this contact details as one contact details to the employee and it contains the json data and how to pass the each update in the json data here we specified we will have one contact details and many addresses okay so save it and if you try to access the same old endpoint now we can observe a output of nicely formatted data okay so let's check our endpoint so if i try again here you can see the output the contact details contacts all the previous json string data now nicely formatting okay this is not formatting after receiving the string at the our application it is directly coming like that from the sql server itself so to understand that we can uh, look at the query how database context generates so here you can see the select query and in this select query you can see one keyword like json query so this going to parse the JSON data into individual columns and written as a separate table sets. So that is how column mapping works. Next, let's try to filter the data or query the data. Okay. So it is very easy to query. Okay. So in this sample JSON, you can query any straight object like this. If that is an array of object, you cannot query. First, you have to retrieve it and then query it. Okay, if it is a normal straight object, if contacts contains another email object, which is not an array, normal orbit, there, there are like nested n number of objects, you can query directly. But if it is an array, you, sh you cannot frame the link you query. Okay, that is one point to remember. So let me do a query like uh, I want to filter the data by this email ID, which is inside of the contacts object. Okay. So in the employee controller, let me create a new endpoint. Okay. 
get by email let me name it like this okay string email okay by email okay and here i have to filter it right so i can filter directly there contact details dot contacts dot email dot to lower equal to equal to email dot to lower okay see inside of the contacts object i have contacts object inside of it i have email i am filtering inner object property okay dot to list okay to list async so let's test it whether we are getting valid information or not okay let's go to our swagger here we have one more endpoint right so here we have to pass our email address so let me copy the email address from here okay and execute it see now i got only one record previously we have two records both the records are coming okay let me show here itself where is the endpoint so if i execute my first endpoint i will get all the data from the database id2 and id1 because there is no filter but here i am filtering by email address so the data whoever having this email address only i will get if you observe here only single record so like that we can filter also if you observe the generated query so generated query see here this is the select query for email address see some email value is comparing with the data that itself we can understand our directly we are querying on the sql server with our uh, json properties we are doing a where condition on json property data okay so that is the beauty of the ef code now let's test update or add okay so how we can update in normal way if you want to update we have to update entire data right but using this ef core 7 we can do partial updates or full updates as well okay uh, let's check the let's check the updates as well okay let me create one more action method but this time i am going to create the post action method okay http post action method and i will name it like add new address okay add address okay and here i am going to input my address object okay so here what i can do first we need to so address from the body from form body right and i want to pick up the specific record for that i am going to have a query parameter okay so from query i will take id as a input value okay to fetch the particular record okay now what i can do let me query fetch the data based on the id first okay so id equal to id in the query parameter and this time we don't have collection we will have a single object so first our default is thing okay now i got the data so whatever data we store in the results still have a uh, track on the db context so result dot okay contact details dot address dot add and if i pass my payload okay this payload from the new address so it will attaches this data to the context and if i call save changes async okay so my old db context dot save changes async so that going to update our data into the this json object okay now let's test it 
here is my post method let's try to update it okay here i'm going to add it like office okay let me add it for my second record this address okay let's execute okay here we are getting the data but successful 200 but let's check in the database directly okay let me copy let me re-execute the query and copy the second record data let me paste it over here and format it and see this is the office address i just added that means we have successfully added a partial data into our json object okay if you observe the query see this update and some json query which is a sql command this is actual command for updating into the our database so that is that is how we can do the update okay for suppose if you want to partially update instead of adding something like uh, phone number okay contact details dot contacts dot phone and you can specify the value and simply call the save changes session so that going to update our contact details also this data this phone number i can update to zero zero okay like that we can do update also previously we did add it same way we can do update also so this is the benefit of ef core 7 for communicating with the json data in our sql db column i hope this video delivered some useful content to you all if you like the video please do support me by subscribing to my channel soon we are going to meet with new content until then signing out